Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the Vega Voomer kit. It's a 120th scale kit at a skill level 1 from Lindbergh, number 72333. Now this vintage kit is still available at online auctions and out of the box it's a perfect kit to introduce kids to the modeling hobby. There's only 21 pieces molded in white chrome clear with soft black tires and one water slide decal for the hood. Sometimes a little glue can help secure the parts though but this is mostly a snap style kit and goes together quickly and easily with the instructions. With its simplicity and larger size, this 2009 release of the kit was a static unit for beginners, but it was also a great choice to become a rolling billboard for write-on replicas with the application of a few homemade decals. Now homemade decals are really pretty easy to make. They only require an inkjet uh, printer and some inkjet paper uh, that's decal paper and supplied by online suppliers and hobby centers uh, alike. Now the addition of a little detailing like trim foil and black wash will help the appearance of this simple kit uh, turn it into a really great looking display. The body proportions are a little off and there's no engine or inner fender wells. There's also very little details to the interior but that's what makes it so easy for a child to put together. When you're done with the kit, it'll be about eight and a half inches long, three and three quarters inches wide, and two and a half inches high. Here is the layout of the kit, and you can see my version of an open box review in about five seconds. Well, now that that's over, I'll show you how to put the model together and show you how to customize it to your own use by adding some custom decals. We'll be using pretty much um, snap fit but occasionally a little glue and sometimes uh, even some epoxy or super glue for strength and a variety of finishing products. So please heed the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products uh, that you see or hear mentioned in the review. As you can see, most of the detail is molded into the one-piece chassis and interior. About the only extra piece for the interior is the steering column and the shifter and uh, parking brake. But there are a couple of issues, as you can see in the white arrows here. There's some uh, mold marks, ejector pin marks, that need to be filled or sanded off here. So we're going to do a little work on this and the body and prep it for paint. As you can see, there's also uh, some parting lines on the quarter panels uh, that are pretty heavy and need to be sanded off and finished smooth. And also a little touch-up work around those headlights. In the rear, you can see uh, that parting line continues all the way across the windows and down the back well. And there's a small uh, tab on the end of the trunk that needs to be smoothed out too. Up front on the hood, there's a sink uh, just behind the hood scoop area and also a little flash on the point uh, of the rise in the top of the hood bump. Here are the paints I'll be using. Some Duplicolor primer and also a perfect match uh, paint called Dover Arctic White for the base. And then there's some Tamiya uh, Blue and the X4 and Red X7 paints. There's going to be some intricate paint uh, with the colors on this kit so uh, we're going to start with a good base of uh, durable medium uh, light gray primer by uh, Duplicolor. After that's dry I gave it the uh, overall coat in and out uh, with the, Ar the Dover Arctic White Duplicolor paint for my base coat. This will stand out against the contrast now we will begin to mask off the areas that we're going to paint a different color. I use some regular masking tape here um, and also some of the white Tamiya curve type tape that does a good job of making a nice fine line. Next we'll spray those areas uh, red with the uh, X4 Tamiya paint and then we'll start to 
tape off the areas we want to stay red with the white Tamiya Curve paint. You can find this in various widths at hobby centers and online. So then we'll spray most of the center line blue and with the X7 Tamiya paint uh, through an air gun. And then you'll notice I started to paint the uh, back fender there with the blue and decided I needed to keep that red area. So what I did was use some lighter fluid. That's right, lighter fluid will clean off um, fresh paint. And I also used it to touch up some of the areas and even remove the red stripe that I had painted down the A pillar in front. Common back in the 70s for the grabber style cars was a blacked out rear deck around the taillights. So I followed suit here and painted that area flat black. We'll start producing the custom decals now. These are made on standard uh, types of programs in your computer. Uh, Microsoft Paint, Photoshop, um, there's also free stuff out there called GIMP, uh, GIMP2, and those programs will allow you to easily make shapes and add text to them like I did for the broad blue stripes on the side here. And then we'll be using some of the setting solutions for these big stripes to make sure that they settle into contours and stick well to the body. Also, we'll be making some uh, custom uh, decals that uh, I had uh, produced for this model. Uh, one of which is the main side door decal for my logo, uh, as it will stand and serve as one of my rolling billboards. Also, I had decided to uh, continue the sports car theme uh, like they do with logo sponsor uh, decals on the, main, on the real cars by using those of the types of model manufacturers that I build of. Uh, and so I, I printed those out, sized them up, and then once you get them printed on your decal paper, you have to give it a good coating of clear lacquer so that the uh, ink will stay in place when you put them into the water. Of course, one of the secrets to uh, good paint and decaling is that you make sure every uh, segment dries thoroughly before you move to the next. Each coat of paint had been uh, given a day to harden and the decals uh, are put on and they set overnight and, and then once that is done you can give the overall body a coat of clear uh, paint in order to preserve the decals and the paint. I'll be using a variety of trimming items in order to bring out the accents on this kit. You can see the Molotov chrome pens there on the left some uh, bare metal foil up at the top, some silver paint, and also some chrome uh, chart tape that I'll use for some of the trim as well. As an example, I used the Molotov chrome pen to make the uh, keyhole stand out in the back, and I also used the uh, silver paint and dry brushed the uh, logo script there at the back and up in the uh, upper left front corner of the car. And we'll also be using some chart tape. It's just, uh, it's made for making charts and this has a chrome uh, finish to it. So those were cut out and pieced into the door sills. Now up by the windshield wipers, those are uh, given a bare metal foil treatment, which is like adhesive tape with a chrome finish. You just smooth it on, uh, press it in, burnish it on, and then trim off the excess. And then you have what looks like chrome. Back in the rear, we're going to be using some to uh, make the uh, uh, turn lights and the uh, side lights uh, stand out. So you can see the side lights here are, are chromed uh, and trimmed, and then we'll be applying some uh, amber to the uh, front and, and red to the rear, as well as the tail lights, which will get some foil treatment. So we'll go ahead and trim those all off and get them ready for paint. Now I went ahead and painted the uh, inserts there for the tail lights with some uh, uh, some stoplight red paint. It's kind of a see-through type transparent paint. And one of the secrets is that you can you can scrape the paint off of uh, if you're careful of the bare metal foil to leave a little bit of bare metal foil trim shine, so that this looks like a regular uh, uh, stop and turn signal fixture in the back. 
went and started some detailing on the uh, other pieces that are <laughs> the rest of the kit mostly. Um, there's some uh, black wash in here which is a 50-50 mix of paint and thinner and it's just laid into the insets to give the details some definition. Also the um, shifter and the parking brake were uh, painted flat black on uh, the non-metal areas. I wanted to give my windows um, a tint so I I taped off with some uh, low stick tape uh, the outside portions of, of the windows and then I turned it inside out or upside down and spray painted the uh, inside with some of that uh, tint paint that uh, used to be popular. Unfortunately it turned out to be more of an iridescent frost um, and I wasn't really happy with its transparency so a word to the wise is uh, test out your tint paint to make sure that it works um, before you use it. Then I went ahead uh, and turned the body over now that it was fully dried and added the windows to the inside uh, it fits right into some notches there in the front and the back and I also used a little glue there to keep it in place and and also the uh, bumpers they can be installed uh, at this time now too. I painted the centers of the inner tail lights uh, white for the backup lights and pressed the rear bumper into position um, and these parts are, uh, fit very well uh, in fact uh, the paint on the body makes them a little tight so you might find it uh, expedient to go ahead and use a sharp hobby knife to um, just trim out some of the paint from the inside of those holes but still they fit perfectly you just press them into position up front the uh, front bumper and grill go into position nicely just push them into place there and the uh, headlights can be installed at this time too. I used a little bit of uh, the turn signal amber on the um, turn signals on the lower section there to give them uh, a nice appearance. As there's little uh, definition and detail to the interior and the, the lower chassis pan I simply sprayed them both with some flat black primer uh, and added a little bit of uh, uh, textured type of um, to the interior with some uh, semi-gloss clear but I think that it really needed something there's no gauges even scripted on the dash so I borrowed one uh, a, da a dash plate and gauge uh, instrument panel from a NASCAR kit just to have something in my uh, pro stalker here uh, to give it something to look at through the window I also painted the uh, steering wheel red, white, and blue to match the exterior to give it a, a little pizzazz for the interior. Then added the, um, the shifter and the uh, brake handle to the interior and installed the steering column uh, behind the uh, dash panel instrument gauge panel there where I had glued it to the top uh, shelf of that uh, dash panel. Next thing I did was uh, to look for the contact points which are pretty simple to find and then uh, I turned uh, the uh, body over, painted that flat black on the roof and then installed the interior into position with some uh, glue to keep it into place. Now we'll locate the um, uh, hood hood ornament there uh, which is supposed to be a blower uh, from the underside and there's some tabs in the front uh, and also um, there's some arrows here the bigger black arrows that show where the interior uh, is mounted against uh, the post and back and a small notch in the front so those will be glued in place now also remember that you have to remove chrome and paint whenever you're gluing two surfaces together to get good adhesion. The tires are pretty simple affair. Um, they have raised uh, letters, however, there's no tread on them. Um, of course, you'd expect that for slicks uh, in the back, and these tires uh, are two sizes. There's a, a smaller tire and wheel hub for the fronts, and uh, the same uh, larger tire and uh, larger hubs for the back but they looked better uh, when they were toned down with a little black wash and so I scuffed the surface of the uh, tread area or at least where it should be uh, to give it a little more of a road worn look. After those were assembled I used a fine paintbrush and some white paint 
uh, and the dry brush technique to um, uh, give the definition to the raised uh, letters on the sidewalls and it, it brings them out so that they look like um, what used to be um, original OEM tires. Now gather up the uh, two plastic axles and the wheel assemblies and the uh, chassis pan and we'll put that together at this time. Slide the axles into position under the tabs and through the uh, channels there. As you can see the black arrows indicate the tabs are covering the axles and keep them into position. And then what we'll do is uh, we're going to paint those white because as you can see on the underside there's holes there uh, where the tabs are so we're going to uh, rotate those axles and paint them black with a little bit of uh, flat black paint uh, as you can see here they really stand out so I think it's something that needs to be done uh, and so that's what I did I, I simply rotated the tires uh, which were glued to the ends of the axles and then uh, it's time to install the chassis into the body. Now there's some posts and tabs and you can use those with a little glue but I found uh, some screws uh, that used to be used in the screw bottom type kits and I went ahead and put a little glue on those posts and tabs and also I used the uh, screws there to secure the chassis to the body. Well there you have it. This simple kit is still available out there and makes a perfect kit for the beginner. Uh, and if you've got a young child that you want to introduce to the hobby, this would make a good start for them. You don't have to be fancy and uh, it goes together very easily. Uh, the only thing that's difficult is paint. But if you really want to make it stand out, uh, you could put yourself together some custom decals, print them out, and stick them on like I did. Um, a little extra attention to paint and you've got yourself a special uh, type of rolling billboard for whatever it is you want to portray on your model. It makes for a great shelf display and if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and at our website right on replicas.com. Thanks.